Hello, and welcome to Audio Fundamentals, Episode 8. So today, I am going to address a request that somebody had in the comments a couple weeks ago, and that is to do some overview of synthesizers, namely subtractive synthesis, additive synthesis, and we'll just briefly touch on a couple other types of synthesis. So the main types of synthesis that you have would be, as I said, subtractive synthesis, additive synthesis, there's FM synthesis, wavetable synthesis, and several other types. To begin with, we're going to look a little bit at subtractive synthesis. So this is the most common analog or analog style synthesizer technique, and the basic way that it works is you've got something called an oscillator, which creates a complex tone like a a square wave or a triangle wave or a sawtooth wave, and then you have various filters that subtract partials from that complex tone. That's the most basic part of it, but then to create more interesting sounds, you've got things called LFOs and envelope generators and several other modulators or things that can change the parameters of the filter and of the amplitude of the beginning complex tone and, and things like that. So let's let's first delve into oscillators. An oscillator is a sound generator, and oscillation, if you recall, that's just a term for something that goes back and forth, like the pendulum that we talked about a while back. Almost all analog synthesizers or digital analog emulating synthesizers have some or all of these waveforms. And I'll play a little sample of each of these. There's the sawtooth wave, the triangle wave, the square wave, and similar but not quite exactly the same, the pulse wave, also called the rectangular wave. And then you've, on some, you've got a sine wave, but that's not too useful for a subtractive synth because that's only one partial and the filter has nothing to work with. Then oftentimes you can add various amounts of noise, such as white noise, to your sound to also pass through the filter. So filters. Filters are really the heart of subtractive synthesis because it's kind of like sculpture. You start with a big block of something and then remove pieces of it to make it look more interesting. Now, since we've already covered the various types of filters, you can look back at the previous video to to see those, um, this seemed like a good time to introduce the subtractive synthesis. So here's, here's an example of a normal unfiltered sawtooth waveform and then running it through a low pass filter. That's the normal sawtooth. And then there's through a low pass filter. Now that's somewhat useful in itself, but where you really get into interesting synthesized sounds is in modulation. There are a couple types of modulators that you'll usually find in a subtractive synthesizer. There's envelope generators, which create a modulation that just goes through once. It's a it's a one-shot shape, much like you saw several videos ago in the ADSR section, that's one form of envelope generator, and you can apply it to any parameter in the synthesizer, not just the amplitude. And then you've got an LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So remember, an oscillator at an audio frequency is what's creating the sound to begin with, and then a low frequency oscillator is going back and forth at a much slower rate so that it can continuously modulate a parameter of some type. So here's an example of a sawtooth waveform with the filter cutoff frequency being modulated by an envelope. So you can hear over the course of each note, it goes wow, it becomes brighter and then darker because the filter's cutoff frequency is going higher and then lower. It's actually using an ADSR envelope. Now here's an example of another sawtooth waveform, this time with an LFO modulating the filter. It just keeps going up and down and up and down and up and down, like so. And that's greatly exaggerated. Usually you won't have something modulating that hugely, except as a special effect. So that's the basic core of a subtractive synthesizer, and there's also various advanced features that you'll find. Most have more oscillators than just one, some of them have extra wave shapes. A lot of them have different uh, different shapes or types of LFOs and envelopes. Many of them will let you make the parameters velocity sensitive. So in other words, the harder you hit the key, the more 
something happens. And of course, a lot of synthesizers also include parts of other synthesis techniques. You've probably heard of Bob Moog, who invented the first widely used subtractive synthesizer. According to Wikipedia, it was first showcased in 1967 at the Monterey Pop Festival. And you'll hear it on a lot of albums from that era, like as it was coming out from about 68 or so through the 70s. It was featured a little bit on Abbey Road by the Beatles, which was the last album they recorded, even though it wasn't the last that they released. Uh, You'll also hear it on various other albums by The Doors, Simon and Garfunkel, and several others. So that's subtractive synthesis in a nutshell. Okay, so now we've got additive synthesis, and surprisingly, this is the first type of synthesis that was ever invented because it's used on organs. It's fairly simple in that you take a bunch of partials, usually harmonically related, and you add them together. So here are a couple kind of nonsense examples to illustrate the concept, but here's one that is a sound made of all partials that are harmonic to each other. You hear each partial separately, then you'll hear them stack up to combine, and then you'll get a weird sort of optical illusion in sound effect when you hear a dumb little melody played with that full sound. You'll hear they'll all come together. Now here's an example made of non-harmonic partials, and I'll do the same process, play each of the partials, combine them, and then play melody. And now to make this sound more appropriate, because it sounds a little bit like a bell, I've used a different amplitude envelope with a fast attack and a quick decay. So let's go back a few decades and look at the Hammond organ, which uses tone wheels. This is a form of additive synthesis. The draw bars that you pull out to increase the level of various partials are the perfect example of additive synthesis. I don't have a Hammond in my studio, but I can show you a digital simulation so you can get an idea for how this works. So if we start with this draw bar, we play a low G, that ends up at about 100 hertz. That's a convenient number so that we can see mathematically what's happening with these different partials. The next draw bar up, there it is, the next partial is at 200 hertz. Next one is at 300. The next one should be at about 400. Then 500. 600. On this particular draw bar organ, there is no 700, but this one would be 800. So we've got the first partial, or fundamental, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, skipping the seventh, and there's the eighth. So there are various other types of synthesis that I'll just briefly mention. Hopefully we get a chance to go through them in a later video. There's distortion synthesis, the most common type of which is FM synthesis, and you're probably familiar with this sound. If you're over about 35, you probably know it from the Yamaha DX7, and if you're younger, you probably know it from the sound chip in the Sega Genesis game console. There's also wavetable synthesis, which is where you draw one cycle of a waveform, and then the synthesizer uses that shape to create the wave. You've got physical modeling, which is a fairly recent invention because it uses a lot of computer power, where the computer renders, kind of like a 3D rendered picture, what would have happened in the physical world if you had a string or air column or whatever else is vibrating in a particular instrument. You've got granular synthesis, which is kind of fun. It's often used by remixers. That's where you have a recording, you take a tiny slice of the sound and use that almost like a wavetable. And of course you have straight up sampling, which is probably the most common type of synthesis used on just your average home keyboard that has various sounds like piano and guitar and trumpet and stuff like that. 
So thanks a lot for watching. Please feel free to leave comments, questions. Please subscribe if you like it. Before we leave, it's now time for a synthesis dance party.